Hi, now I have to open up with the openness fader. And uh, yes, very good. So, first things first. Openness and transparency is very much about trust. And why is it about trust? In one end, we have full transparency, which means, example, a window is transparent, so you can look through it, so everything is like visible of the game. And on the other end, you would have secrecy, where nobody knows anything about anything. If you have trust in the organizers, if the players trust organizers enough, they will um, be content with having a very secretive game. But on the other way, if you want to have a very transparent game, you as organizers or lab rights have to trust the players. If you don't trust your players, you will not uh, want to make a, a transparent game design because you think that, oh, they'll misunderstand it and stuff like that. <laughs> yes. And then it's also about expectations. And I put this into two categories. There's the people who want a very transparent game because they want to know about safety. And I mean safety in a very broad term. So safety about that they have food in the LARP, that there's actually a toilet in the LARP, and that um, there's some, some kind of game mechanics that are not um, violent or abusive or sexual or at least if they are, they have been fought through in a good way and they want to know about it. So a very transparent game would explain how does everything work in the game. But there's also some people who, when they hear about the LARP, they just get so hyped about the idea. They think, oh, you're doing a, a Harry Potter LARP on a castle? Awesome! And then they don't ask any questions whatsoever about anything else. They're just like, it's a Harry Potter game, it's on a castle, that's enough for me. <laughs> These are the unconditionally hyped players. They can go in for the full secret experience. Yes. And then, this was about transparency. I just, if anyone didn't get it, then it's about looking through stuff. <laughs> so. We have pre-game transparency and we have in slash off-game transparency, which is what is doing the game. First, I'm going to talk about what happens before the game and how that can be either transparent or secret. So, where is the game? Uh, 1942, um, Sasha told me that actually some of the players didn't know where the game was held. They just knew it was in the forest and somebody picked them up in a bus and drove them out there. This will be okay with the uh, unconditionally hype player, but uh, a more anxiety player would have want to know where am I going, is it a safe place, which country are we going to, <laughs> stuff like that. But for some people that's not important. And then there's the who, and that can be into two categories. Who is the other players? Some people want transparency about who they're playing with, and for some, it's not that important. And there's also the organizers. Who is organizing the game? There's a, a group, uh, organizing group in, in, uh, in Denmark who was famous for never telling who the organizers were. They just said, this is our group and we're making games. So either you trust the whole group or you don't go to the LARP, which was like an interesting uh, way of being secret about who they were. But, much more interesting and much more relevant, I guess, for, for most of you, is during the game. And now I'm going to do a little drawing, inspired by Emma. So I also have my LARP, and I'm going to explain what character and player knowledge is. And hopefully you'll understand it. If you can't hear me, please wave your arms or shout. So, in my LARP, we have two participants, or players. This is player number one, and this is player number two. They also have a character. Character number one, character number two. There's something that the player knows about, which could be uh, the theme of the LARP, or it could be um, something about the other characters. 
and they might know, they might have read, player number one might have read player number two's character. Thereby, player number one knows a lot about the game that character number one doesn't know about. And then, these two players can communicate on sort of a off-game meta level, which will be explained more later with the meta fader. But I'll, and I'll also give an example. Like uh, yesterday night, when you were playing New Voices of Art, you could tap the glass, and then the player, or, uh, the, or not, sorry, the character had to uh, do an inner monologue and talk about what the character was feeling inside. Thereby, the character, number one, was communicating something to the other player, which the player then could use somehow. And this could also usually just be the players to the, or the character to the character communicating. Does this make any sense? Yes. Amazing, because you're near a long way. Okay, I'll just uh, go through the other examples. So, at, when our destinies meet, there was, I don't know if it happened for all of you, but there's a possibility for the organizer or the GM to uh, repeat the scene and say, play with the scene once more, now you need to be more angry. This time, the second scene, the player knows that we just played the first scene, but the character has to forget about that it has played the new scene because they're resetting the character. So therefore, there's some, some difference in what's happening and something is more transparent for the character than the player. Um, yeah. Also in uh, Kapl, which Oliver was talking about, there was um, up, on the, up on the wall, there was like a, a death counter, like who was going to be kicked out of the game. And then five players were always on that, on that tablet. And then they knew that soon their time was up. But one thing that was kind of anxiety provoking about it was that not even the player knew when they were supposed to die before they were up on the, up on the, on the screen. So therefore, as a player, you don't know when you're, uh, you're about to die. You just know that, oh, well, I know one hour before I need to die, I get a message, but up until then, I don't know anything about it. But I know that I have to die at some point. And that could be anxiety for one. And that's sort of an example of a secretive design, where you make it a secret when people are to die, and then at some point you make it transparent, one hour before they die. <laughs> yes. And also there's, uh, you can use random elements, such as dices, um, for example. So um, you could say that after one hour we roll a dice, and uh, if it's 20, then um, Martin has to die. If it's uh, 12, then Stuart has to die. And then the game alters from there. Nobody knows who's going to die because there's a random element in it. So it's a secret until we roll the dice. And uh, another technique that you can use, which with great effect, but it can sometimes be, uh, be a bit complicated, is the hidden NPC or um, a casted player, which is uh, a character we usually... Okay, first I want to ask, how many know about the NPC term? The NPC is a casted player, so it's a player who has like a, an assignment from the organizers and there's a communication between them, and usually the organizers is more transparent with the NPC, so they know more about the game design. And they have like a very fixed mission to do in the game. And sometimes, or a lot of times, they're thinking out of their uh, character and playing with their uh, player. But the way that it works is that you can have this hidden character in the game and uh, you can plan out stuff that they have to do, which is secret to the rest of the players. They don't know about this hidden NPC. He uh, goes to the workshops before the game and he gets a character like the rest of the characters and he goes to the web, web forum and says yes, that he's part, of, um, he's part of the game. So, does that make sense? Good. 
Aspire. Aspire is a good example. Yes. And now we have something about the best intentions. And this is more like a, the philosophy of transparency or not transparency. Because usually when you make a LARP, if you uh, are very transparent in the beginning of your process, you should tell the players everything about the LARP, you will also get a lot of comments and questions and the players have all these ideas that they, maybe you should not kill anybody in the game, maybe you should make it more hardcore, maybe you should make it more this and that, and they have like a thousand and millions ideas. And sometimes it's easier just to keep it, some of the game design more secret, so you don't give, get too much feedback about how to change your game. So what I recommend is to keep most of it a secret, and when you have the complete design, then you can be transparent about it. And then you say to the players, this is how it's going to be. There's not going to change anything. But if you're very transparent early in your organizing process, then you will get a lot of, a lot of uh, resistance about the whole um, game. But again, sometimes questions can help. And uh, I recommend always having a sparing group of uh, people that you can go to. And then the max and minimum positions of the fader. So at the ultimate top of transparency, everyone would know everything that is to know about the game. So you would have told them about the budget, you would have told them about who's going to play who, and so on and so on and so on. The good thing about this is that people have a very clear idea, idea about what they're going to do in the LARP. Except if it's a really bad design, of course. And also, it's a lot easier to meet expectations. Usually when people go to a LARP and they're not really sure what's going to happen, they hype themselves up with some kind of idea that, that a lot of stuff is going to happen and that doesn't happen and then they cry or get mad. But if you tell them everything about the game, then they know what's going to happen. They might not trust you, like the example with uh, let's we're going to eat clay in uh, Himmelhau, but you've been transparent about it and so they can prepare their expectations. And then of course you also get help from the players. The bad side could be that they get an information overload. So if you tell them everything about everything, they can't focus about the importance of the game, importance of the game, and they focus upon everything uh, and want to maybe alter your masterpiece as you made it. And then we have the last, which is the secrecy. <coughs> so one of the big strengths in secrecy is that you can have investigation and wonder. So if, we're, for example, my character um, doesn't know that there's coming a dragon in the game. But my player really loves dragons. And when I see this dragon in the game, I'm like, yes, that's so awesome. And thereby I get a lot of, a lot of wonder and I really enjoyed the game. No matter how shitty the design was, there was a dragon and it was a big surprise and I was really happy about it. If you told me beforehand about that there will be a dragon in the game, then I'll be like, hmm, awesome, I'm gonna go to the game. But when I see the dragon, well, it might not live up to my expectations. And I might not be like, ah, there's a dragon. Especially if you tell that the dragon can actually fly and it doesn't, it doesn't do in the real world. Yeah. And then uh, I said this about the possible political agenda and I don't want to go into that because we don't really have the time. So um, that'll be for a discussion tonight or at some point we'll have time, maybe lunch. Then there is uh, more hype and I have this idea that knowledge is power, which is both a good and a bad thing. But you as an organizer can give special players extra info and they will feel really awesome about it. So I could tell Erland a secret about the game and Erland would be like, yeah, I know something special. Uh, and he can divide this knowledge to other people. Yes, and now I have to be done. 
bad things, there's more misunderstandings, and there might be some, use, some ideas that's not used. So maybe Alan has this really awesome secret, but he doesn't tell it to anyone. And that's just sad, because then only Alan gets to know about it. I want to LARP. And then you want to LARP. <laughs> and last thing, LARPs can get overhyped um, if you're very secret and then don't live up to expectations. So that was it about transparency or secrecy. Thank you.